Let's do a drill, guys. We were doing side control escapes last week, and we were doing a really powerful escape where our partner has an underhook. If you're the person on top and you have the person on bottom has an underhook on you, it's gonna be very difficult if they know how to use this underhook to hold them flat on their back, okay? Right now, I do not have control of my partner's shoulder. It looks like I'm over the top of it, but if she just uses her underhook, don't even use that bottom arm, just use your underhook and start to turn. Look, look, I can't stop that. You guys see? She uses that, I slide right off. I have no control over her shoulder. If I have the underhook, it's different. Now she can't use that arm to jack up my armpit. You guys see, and I can pin her down to the floor. So if your partner has an underhook on bottom, you're gonna need to make a move here. You can't just stay here and hang out here, okay? One of the easy answers that we've already practiced this week is if I was here and I, I didn't like this position, we could do that drill we did last night where we throw our arm over, block the hip, transition to north-south, okay? This kills that escape, okay? But let's practice this alternate method. Sometimes you're gonna get here and maybe you can't transition fast enough and your partner starts to hit a really explosive bridge and using that underhook. Go just use the underhook, try to throw me off. Hard. Yeah, like yeah, hard. yeah. That's our move right there. That's our counter. What's happening is whenever she arches and throws that underhook off, she's taking me 45 degrees in this direction. Go ahead and do that. If I don't do something, that's what's gonna happen. You guys see? If your hands are fully committed to trying to hold their partner down, whenever they go to do that, you're gonna get off balance. And look, you're gonna lose your position. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna to have to abandon our grip. We're gonna post, and basically what's happening is she's taking all her force this way. I'm gonna send an opposing force and kind of redirect her force. Watch what I mean. So right here, when she explodes, yeah, go explode, but uh, go half, half speed. She explodes, I post my elbow, and I throw my leg up and over the shoulder. You guys see that? When I do that, do that explosively full speed, it just kills everything in the water right there. I'm not trying to stop it by pressing into her. I'm just redirecting it. So it's like bing, bing. Make sure that you let go, go ahead, and you either post your elbow or your hand. You guys see? This leg is coming up and over deep. You guys see where I step my foot out? In real life, we're using like her force as a, a key to make this move happen. So I feel it happening and I just react by throwing my leg way up and over the shoulder and posting my foot on the floor. When we get to here, we have a couple different options. We're going to work after we drill this a few times, we're going to work to submit our partner from this position. But for the drill, all you really need to do is bring your knee back down. You can settle right into the mountain and you can switch sides. Guys, this is a terrible position to get caught in. If you ever are dealing with a wrestler and a wrestler gets an underhook, get ready because the big explosion is coming probably directly after. Usually when they get an underhook, they know how to do an explosive arch and bridge. They're so good at arching and turning to their knees because of wrestling that they'll usually just beast mode you on top. So when this underhook, you feel this big explosion coming, go ahead. I'm posting, throwing over over here. Okay, so I killed it. Now I wanna start using this position to attack this arm and shoulder, okay? What we're gonna do is first we're gonna build up and I'm gonna heel toe, heel toe, heel toe my foot in until it's right behind my partner's shoulder blades. I'm also pinching my knee. And Kendall will tell you it's already, like there's tension on the shoulder, it's hurt, it's not comfortable already. If you have stiff shoulders, I'm looking at you right there. Guys, if you have stiff shoulders, it's already gonna be painful. So be careful from here on out. But now it's tight, I can start to work some things. The first easiest thing to do is just block the elbow, hold it in your hip. I'm gonna bend the arm over my hip. And now watch, I'm gonna change my grip to a pushing grip. You guys see that? And now you guys see I just take the hand that way. And there's not, Kendall's more flexible than most of you people here. And you can see she doesn't go very far because it's so tight. 
her elbow is up on her shoulder line like a good Kimura. I'm bending that arm over my hip, making it nice and tight. And as long as I keep the elbow in place, I start to push. This is a very, very tight Kimura, okay? If you're in prison or the person owes you money on bottom, you could also wrist lock them right there. You guys see that? So as I'm doing the Kimura, if I feel like I don't want to make them, maybe I just want to make it a little more uncomfortable than it needs to be, you just fold that wrist, a nice little wrist lock there, but I don't wrist lock my friends. Uh, the next move I would do would be to go elbow deep at the wrist, scoop this arm up, put the thumb right in the crook of your neck. I'm gonna grab the elbow joint with both hands. I'm gonna find that little mm -hmm. knot. I'm gonna grab it. As I pinch down on this, I'm compressing the elbow to my chest and I'm rolling it. So compression down, I roll, and at the same time, my head is gonna push that way against the thumb. And you get the tap right there, okay?